All right, so now we're going to go to a point where we're going to be butting head to head, not just talking about one movie, but classic film fight comparing two movies, but the fun of this is it's two completely random movies. movies. It's not completely similar movies that are comparable in some way. Yeah, and we'll still have the same format. I'll give my two minutes, he gives his two minutes. Debunking the other film and praising ours. Yeah. Rebuttal, rebuttal. Uh, I'll pick first because you just picked Narnia. Uh, oh, you oh, trash I, now this is like what I'm really scared now. If I'm stuck with it, I'm stuck. Oh yeah, I, I can close my eyes now. I mean, open <laughs> I'm stuck with trash, and I have to. Wait, wait, don't open it. Don't open it. Oh no. Oh, Three, two, two, one. Oh. Oh my. What did you get? Oh, you don't want to know. Oh. What did you get? <laughs> Read it out loud for me. I can't. We want you. I got Jurassic World, so I have less than an uphill fight. But Ugh. compared to the emoji movie, it's not even a question. I. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. How do I know this? <laughs> I literally got sick, like, after watching this movie. <laughs> I couldn't function properly. I couldn't go. I couldn't, like, eat without thinking, like. Oh, hey, stop. I've been getting the mindset of it being the best movie oh, ever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Flip for first. All right, you want heads or tails? Heads. Tails. I want to go second. You start, go. Okay. You know, everyone goes through an identity crisis. We don't know who we are, what we want to be. You know, what's the guy's name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Uh, all right, the main... Is it like Gene or something? Gene, it is Gene. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. Gene has that same problem. Like, you know, society wants him to be something he's not on the inside. We can all, you know, relate to that. We can relate to Gene. He just wants to do his emotions. He wants to, you know, emote whatever he wants. What the world is telling him, the stupid Western patriarchal society <laughs> is telling him <laughs> to be just one thing when he wants to be many things. And you can forget that amazing social justice message like, oh, you know, men are always taking credit for a woman's or whatever her name is, Bob Salomon Boff says something like that. You know, it's a good message for the modern era. 21st century, get out of here. <laughs> um, Jurassic World. Jurassic World is just trash. <laughs> the emoji movie is amazing. Amazing animation though. Good quality. And a lot of good poop jokes. Yeah. <laughs> like when they say, we're gonna get wiped. That is like, <laughs> wiped. Uh, uh, <laughs> why do I remember this movie so much? <laughs> Jurassic World is just one of those really dumb Run from the monster movies. Like, it takes Jurassic Park, a movie that was so intelligent in its characters, themes, its message, and it just makes it into a dumb movie about running away from dinosaurs. Jurassic Park used the dinosaurs as a means to explore a theme, which is why they're only in the movie for like less than 15 minutes. Jurassic World is like, forget that, dinosaurs. Like, let's just have dumb dinosaur action, like the ankylosaurus and the dumbest rex, the T-Rex and the long, who, T-Rex and Velocity teaming up, they're just animals. What the heck is that? Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> the emoji movie. Life finds a way. To Let us remember film. back to the great movie Jurassic Park. The moral film, the films whose moral, moral themes can be summed up in the great line from Jurassic Park 3. So this is how you make dinosaurs? No. This is how you play God. The, the idea of introducing things that had their chance before in nature and have gone extinct into our modern world purely for entertainment value <laughs> is the moral theme of the first three Jurassic Parks. And the next one, Jurassic World, explores the next moral theme of today's modern age as genetic engineering gets further and further and we can make things more so from the ground up that we're much closer than we ever were to, to before. The thing is, is that now what happens when we can engineer our own DNA, Batman Beyond style? Like, where do you draw the ethical lines of where you should and where you sh of, of where you should, right? What does Ian Malcolm say in the first one? Everyone was so worried about the, what they, if they could, they never stopped to worry if they should, and they slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and they sold it. They sold it. See, that's the, that's the theme taken to a new height, because not only they brought back something, they have made their own. They have played God and made new things to roam the earth. That is horrible and scary, and it's something we should think about before we go into this new genetics engineering age. And the emoji movie, seriously, <laughs> you want to say, <laughs> you want to say that we all have an identity crisis on board? No, we don't. It's 
especially tweens with, that have like nothing to do with their lives, question their identities. And if the theme, theme should be connected to good characters, I could tell you who said those good lines. You said to me, what's the main character's name? I had to tell you what his <laughs> name was. You could have looked me in the face and said that the themes were so good when you couldn't even remember the character the themes were tied to. Characters should represent themes of a story. That is a point of a character. And without a character, there are no themes. Gene sucks! Yes, characters should represent. Okay, wait, wait, your rebuttal time is not started. Yes, characters. Yeah, it's not a joke. Let's take out three seconds. Yes, characters should represent the theme of the movie. That's why Jurassic World sucks so bad. Big Husk, like having velociraptors in the like, he was the stupidest character I've ever seen, which represents the stupidness of Jurassic World. He's like that stupid Texan guy who's like, <laughs> like putting in the military. Yeah. <laughs> And then, it's everyone's a stereotype. Like Chris Pratt's the cool, tough dude, you know, from the Navy. And he likes animals, whatever. Um, He's just a small dude. Claire, small dude Claire, is the, Claire is the workaholic who learns to love whatever. You know, it's it's just cliche stereotypes. Were there any cliche stereotypes in the first movie? No, there weren't, because everyone was a person. This movie, no, there were no people in this. Gene is a person. Gene is a normal human. Gene and high fives. High Fives wants to be popular. He wants to be in the top rated emo- emojis. Don't you want to be popular, kids? Don't you want to be popular? <laughs> you just push a sensationalist culture now. <laughs> yes. Be popular and vote for me. Time. <laughs> Time. <laughs> she does not learn to love. That is not the stereotype. She learns the value of life. When, and that's what John Hammond learns. What does John Hammond say? When... People are dying. That's the first time he realizes that there's a weight on it. And he's not just hiring lawyers to cover. People who die were people's sons. They were their brothers, their cousins, their uncles. People, she learns the value of life. And the monster they create, stop. The monster they create that kills even just to kill doesn't have the idea of a value of life. They've created such a horrible thing that, that, that it doesn't even have the basic instincts to just kill for food like a normal dinosaur were, but would. And then, stop. <laughs> putting, putting raptors in the military. We use dogs in the military. Are dogs worthless? It's, it's, the, it's just the desire to turn things into weapons. The desire of man to, to engineer the best possible killing machine they possibly can, which is what man always does. I hate that you got the last of bottle. Stay at my stance. <laughs> Jurassic World is a bad he, he, Jurassic World is a bad movie, but the Emoji movie is an even worse movie. <laughs> My long shot. It's not long shot. Movie. Okay, okay. okay. There, I, I, I do like the themes that Jurassic World is trying, but it gets so bogged down in trying to be a fun monster summer action movie that it forgets that it actually has themes, in my opinion. But uh, the Emoji movie, like I said, it, it made me sick. I could not actually function properly. Like, I couldn't go to sleep because I'm like, oh, that was so stupid. That was so stupid. All night. I couldn't eat because like, oh, that was so stupid. Uh, don't forget that when when uh, the stupid girl says that men are always taking credit for women's work. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It reminds me of the scene in Batwoman where she's like, where she's like, she doesn't want people to, she doesn't want people to give the credit for what she's doing to Batman. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's using Batman's suit, his gadgets, his cave, like everything that belonged to Batman that Batman built, she's using. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> like after Fallen Kingdom, I've kind of like lessen my hate of Jurassic World, but it's still kind of there. <laughs> my, my stance on Jurassic World is it's not, it's not a great movie. It's, it's an okay movie. In my opinion, it's the best Jurassic Park sequel, but it's just because it's the, it's the least, it's the least bad one, not the best one. Two. <laughs> the last act of number two, you could have put any other movie. It's so, it's so disconnected. All right, we're not arguing about two. We're arguing about Jurassic World. <laughs> We can, we can, we might get that. I'm the perfect person for this because we, we agree on so much but disagree on so, so much, much at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't disagree on the emoji movie because that's <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, Alright, I get to pick first this time. Spider Man 2, Spider Man 2, Spider Man 2, the good Spider Man 2. <laughs> oh, if it's Spider Man 2 versus Dark Knight, that'd be so interesting. Ooh, it's a one up life! Jimmy Stewart stops. I'm kidding. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. All right. Let me just <laughs> imagine if I had to argue that. Mm. Oh, sorry. Shark Tale. Shark Tale. Shark Tale. I really tail. hope it's not Shark Tale. <gasps> <gasps> the Dark Knight. Oh, no. I was so scared. Okay. 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 Um. 
I went first last time. You, and you can't compare anything time. about the uh, flip board again. So you, but you get to call it this time. You want to go first or second? So call. You want heads or tails to be first or second? Tails for second. Tails for second. So heads first. <laughs> Do you not know how this works? No. You just <laughs> turn aside to the coin. If you want this to be first and this All right, to be let's second. talk about coins for a minute. Two Face is such a good <laughs> <funny> time. <laughs> Fat transition though. Start. Okay, Brian lives, he dies, <laughs> now we're talking. Guys, the du- Heath Ledger, like, oh, yeah, Heath Ledger's performance as Joker, like, people thought, like, eh, there won't be another Jack Nicholson, even though that movie wasn't good. <laughs> but Heath Ledger just totally stole the show, made it his own, was amazing, but it's not like everyone else wasn't amazing. Everyone else was amazing. You know, the whole story of Two-Face and how they build his character to be a villain is so good. You know, like, how... <clears throat> Like, how Batman deals with the loss of Rachel. It's, Wait a second, these so, two movies are connected anyway. Sh- that animated sh- series? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not thinking about the animated series, but I'm thinking... His, his loss of Rachel, how he's like, how could I fail? Like, it was so... It, was, it hits you in the feels. You know what doesn't hit you in the feels? <laughs> it's a wonderful life. It's, it's a wonderful life. I mean, how can you feel emotional when Jimmy's doing story? Jimmy's doing voice. So they're like, you're just like, come on, come on. Like, what? Like, who kills himself over losing <laughs> cash? Like, you just lost money, okay? Batman deals with his grief a lot better than Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart wants to kill himself. Batman goes to stop the Joker from blowing up a hospital. Who, who's the better? I, I think Batman's the better one, you know? Okay, <laughs> okay. And, guys, it's, it's a wonderful life. Yes, it's a classic. Yes, it's a great Christmas movie, but The Dark Knight is an any day of the year movie. Like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> like, it's The Dark You You already know how good The Dark Knight is. Like, 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 it's not. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> going to start off with a quote from a great man who recently passed away who said, You know, I guess one person really can make a difference. Oh. And that was Stanley. And that's the point of the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. A man who, whose life had touched so many people and he didn't even know it. Know it. And what, 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 is your, what do your parents always tell you when you're young? Be careful what you wish for. This is the story, be careful what you wish for. This is a man who wants to, who, he has a, he's a wife and kids and he wants to kill himself is how low he's been brought. Maybe because Stop. Of kids. He's been brought to the <laughs> bottom of, 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 of his part of his life. And he wishes he was just never born. Not in the time travel sense, but he gets to see how many lives he really did touch. And what goes around comes around. And so many things happen because of the things that just he's done that seem like some of the things most people would do on their day to day. Saving his little brother, who wouldn't save their little brother? You know, and that turns out that in the war it saved a whole train of people because his brother was there to save everyone on that train. And then later, everyone he's touched in his life come back, comes back to help him, to show the villain of the town that even though he stole this man's money and he couldn't pay off part of his business, and he was at the end of his road ready to go to jail, all the lives he, he touched came to touch back. And they came back for him because of what one man had done through his life. The Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, oh, just what to say. What, what could you Better say? Better than it's a wonderful life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have my time. The Dark Knight, I'm going to use the rest of my time because I don't even need to talk about The Dark Knight because I have 15 seconds. And The Wonderful Life, it's, it shows that one person, one person in your day-to-day choices make a difference. And that's actually such a good point in Batman the Animated Series. Batman and Robin, Robin, watch It's a Wonderful Life because Robin shows to Batman it's all about one man who can make a difference. Batman needs It's a Wonderful Life <laughs> and checkmate. Jimmy Stewart needs Batman when uh, Batman ready, needs it. Three, two, one, go. Okay, yes, but do you know who makes a difference more than anyone else? Not just Batman, not just Harvey Dent, but the average people of Gotham, okay? That everybody can make a difference. Not just Jimmy Stewart. The everybody <laughs> tries to kill the guy who's the witness. <laughs> the no, 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 Batman but is. Here's the thing. The, the boat scene. Everybody, even when they vote to blow up the other boat, 
they don't do it because they know that their actions have consequences, as Sammy the Sonic Kid once said. <laughs> I'm the great man. <laughs> so, okay. Classic Sonic. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, because it's the a, choices of one person makes a difference. And um, the prisoner who um, you know throws out the detonator, he makes a difference. He saved the other boat. You know, who knows? Maybe another inmate could have just grabbed it and <laughs> blown up the other boat and proven the Joker right. But the Dark Knight is about how the every man of Gotham can still stand for what's right despite their horrible circumstances, disproving the Joker's philosophy about human nature. Jimmy Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, that man sucks at his job. <laughs> Batman lets his only girlfriend die. Batman lets half of her. Batman only saved half the man he was trying to save. <laughs> Batman is a failure. <laughs> Batman doesn't make much of a difference. Batman has to take the blame on himself at the end because he was incapable of stopping the Joker. Batman couldn't, was so, he's a genius, he couldn't just say, oh, the Joker killed those people, not himself. <laughs> like, the Joker was on a murdering rampage. Why couldn't they just make everyone believe that the Joker killed everyone? And then Batman has to bet. He has to bet on the Joker's philosophy being wrong to win in the end because he couldn't stop the Joker. All it would have taken was one sociopath on a boat of criminals to blow up the other boat. If one person had a lack of empathy, it, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Joker's philosophy only needed one person. And even if it's only a boat of criminals and the degenerates, that one person wouldn't have stood up and detonated the other boat. Wait, did we do this one? Because you, you had the last rebuttal last time. Whatever, doesn't matter. No. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Okay, um, alright, so what are your re- real thoughts on? Oh, of course. Dark Knight's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the hero fails in the end is like one of the greatest parts of the movie. That's it. Take the greatest part, make it the worst part. I see this. Yeah, see, that was my strategy and even the other thing. That's like, I, I, why I said, like, Mission Impossible. It's like, it does both things. It's like, that's, that's the one that's wrong with it. You just gotta try and make the weakest point the strongest and the strongest point the weakest. It's a wonderful life. It's also just a great movie. Yeah. It's, it's, that's why, like I said, it's in Batman the Animated Series. The whole point is that one person can make a difference. And Batman is the same thing. One person standing up to make a difference. And, it, like, just like It's a Wonderful Life. It's not about the character or the one person. It's about the people they inspire who follow them. It's not the man, but the idea that's dangerous. <laughs> that's our script. Okay, well, we're, we're making a Batman film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to make the connection. Like, I was just like, screw Jimmy Stewart, all right? No, it's a wonderful life. A, a great movie, amazing movie. Definitely, it definitely deserves to be a classic. But so does The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, also amazing movie. So, I mean, you just got two, like, really great movies. Like, that, like, the, the themes are pretty close, too, yeah. which is the cool part. So that was a pretty even match, I'd say. That was nice. Oh, oh man. Like, just getting, like, having to badge a wonderful life hurt me a little on the inside. I'm sorry, Jimmy Stewart, and all who love him. The reason I went the same twice in a row is because um, whoever goes first is, is up to the coin, remember? Oh. That's up to the coin. <laughs> you live. You die. Oh, now we're talking. Ooh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, if I get Spider-Man 2, this will be the debate for the ages. <laughs> I really want Spider-Man 2. Rain me for life, but I do love Homecoming. <laughs> I think Homecoming's pretty good. I better than Far From Home, that's for sure. Oh, what, okay, what did I get? Are you ready? SpongeBob movie. Yo. This is gonna be a slaughter. Okay. <laughs> it's not a fight. It's a slaughter. It's a slaughter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where's um, the coin? Here's the coin. Um, you go. Heads or tails? Um, tails for first. Heads. Okay, so I I'm go. going. Yeah, you're you're going first. Okay. You got the timer ready? Ooh. All right. Let me. Three, two, one, go. Both Spider-Man Homecoming and Spongebob, the, Sp- the good Spongebob movie from 2004, are about a boy becoming a man and learning that he should be okay with who he is and not becoming something he isn't. I think Spongebob handles the steam much better than Spider-Man. <clears throat> Let me clarify. So in Spider-Man Homecoming, it's about Peter learning to uh, 
do hero work on his own, not needing Iron Man, knowing that he can be his own hero, not just like Iron Man Jr., and that he doesn't really need to be an Avenger, that he should be happy with who he is and the life he lives in Queens. But it kind of falls flat because we never really get the sense that he has self-doubt or that he's just a boy who can't handle himself. I mean, he's oh, he's Spider-Man. Like, you, this guy is legit. Like, you know, he's got it. <laughs> okay? Like, he goes for the Vulture. He, he doesn't win, but he, he keeps going for the Vulture over and over again, despite Tony Stark telling him, no, you can't do it. You're not good enough. And he just... He, he Have keeps, you ever read a single Spider-Man comic? Like, keeps, that's all of Spider-Man. He keeps... I know, but what I'm saying is that, like, there's no self-doubt. There's no, like... Uh, there's no... Like, it's like, he just he just has it. He's Spider-Man. Like, no matter what anyone thinks, he just does the right thing, you know, and no, no consequences for it. SpongeBob, though, nah. He, he's tricked into believing that he's a man, but then realizes that he is just a kid going on this crazy adventure larger than life, larger than himself, and he embraces it. He Even though he's a kid, he doesn't need to grow up. He doesn't need to become, like, you know, Spider-Man. He doesn't need, <laughs> he doesn't need to prove himself because he has nothing to prove. He's a kid, yes, but that doesn't make him any worse than anyone else. And... Ocean Man <laughs> and Goofy Goober. Oh my God, the Goofy Goober song like that. <laughs> the Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man it's also <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. Tim was so wrong. You would not say it is self-doubt when he loses everything that he thought made him so much better as Spider-Man. You would when he's literally crying that he lost <laughs> the approval of of his only father figure left when. All of that is now weighing down on him. And what does he do? He has to, he still has to get up and do what he knows he needs to do. He needs to fix the mess that he made because he did make a mess. He needs to fix it. That's what Spider-Man is about. Spider-Man screws up constantly in the comics and it's all about how he tries to fix them. Spider-Man, if you know Spider-Man's thoughts from reading the comics, he basically hates himself every day because of how bad a, 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 how bad of a Spider-Man he is. The Spider-Man being inadequate at being Spider-Man is what makes him good as Spider-Man. That's what Spider-Man's about. And the problem is that Plankton <laughs> compared to the vulture are you kidding me the vulture has a family it shows you know empathetic villains in a way that Raimi didn't where it shows that they have you know not just a wife or one kid like he has a full family and he was left destitute by big corporations that he had already had a job claim to that puts him in such a desperate strait see in, in the other versions of Spider-Man the, the villains were always driven insane but this is this is the first time where it's a choice made out of desperation. We always have the choice, and that's part of the reason that Vulture is such a good villain, instead of just being a crazy man, but maybe act like Plankton is. Time. Let me rebut that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you one minute. That's... Boom. So, Spider-Man has no consequences for his failures. He loses his Stark suit. Okay, that, I'll, that, say that, I'll say that. That's his own, like, he loses the suit, but he doesn't need it anyways. I mean, that's his arc that he learns to not need it. But, again, he ditches his classmates, he uh, puts them all in danger, no one gets hurt, he gets attention, he skips attention, but he goes to the principals, and he just lets them off with a warning, like, literally, that's it. He scares off May half to death, and she's, like, all he has to say a second later is, oh, I lost a Stark internship, and he's fine. Like, I don't want a Spider-Man who is, like, down on his luck, who, like, beats the Shrek out of him, okay? Not just... The happy, I mean, happy go lucky. You know, Iron Man gave me a free suit. I get bailed out of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I like the end of Homecoming because he has to prove himself for once. SpongeBob, like, he loses his car. First of all, he gets robbed. He gets like almost dead. <laughs> he almost dies. All right, I did not have enough. You can't about. say that SpongeBob doesn't have no consequence, and that <laughs> Spider-Man is the only one who has to prove himself because, of course, he does. Literally, like when he's okay, trapped into the rocks and he has to lift them up, he has to go after him by himself with everything he made, is in stark contrast to awesome. SpongeBob, awesome. who literally everyone in that movie has to hold his hand the whole way. The, the girl has to trick him into believing he's a man. The guy at the end has to save them, for, and then has to get them back to Bikini Bottom in time to save Mr. Krabs. 
fast. Their hand is <laughs> held the whole movie. They have to sing a song so monsters won't attack them. <laughs> Literally, and then the guy who like helps them jet ski back, and then David Hasselhoff. Yes, David Hasselhoff. And then when they get saved from burning on the table by random, like, and then and then as everything in the in this world gets rehydrated, helps them escape. Literally, SpongeBob doesn't prove himself at all. Everyone helps him. He does all he did was walk there and walk back. <laughs> now he didn't walk back. <laughs> okay, so my actual stance. I do like the Spongebob movie better, but where you could compare them in like a boy like, like learning to handle his own, I think Homecoming actually does that better. <laughs> As I think one did out. <laughs> I mean, not, not much better. I, uh, whatever. <laughs> but like, so like, it's hard to compare them in the one comparison I can make. It's like, ah, uh, no, Homecoming kind of has this one. <laughs> but, Homecoming's an amazing movie. That's... A- of course, it's not the perfect kids film. It's got comedy, clever comedy. It's, you know, an adventure. There's a point to it. There's peril. There's great music. Ocean Man. <laughs> I think it just went for the music. <laughs> like, that should be my only argument. <laughs> Tim is a Ocean Man. Time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Homecoming. Uh, wait, let me clear for my things on Homecoming. Uh, Homecoming is a good movie. It's, uh, I don't think it's as good as Spider-Man 1 or 2, but it does some of the comic things that, because I've read quite a few Spider-Man comics, it does the things that I said. Like, it actually does the parts where Spider-Man has to, you know, pick himself up for once. And then, of course, he's correct because Randy Trilogy does better at Peter Parker and no one has done better at Peter Parker yet. I mean, he's, he's, he's the best in the role for Peter Parker, but in terms of how oh, Peter Parker's life is, yeah. Randy Trilogy's in the best than that the best but because they wrote a solo universe Spider-Man they wrote him to be like an amazing hero and he really sucks at his job he sucks at being Spider-Man in the comics because he's a teenager trying to be a superhero in a world of superheroes which is something I really like to, to see from Homecoming yeah yeah like have you seen Far From Home yet? bro my, <laughs> my, my summer schedule has been insane okay cause yeah um yeah, I do. I do like. Him. I think Vulture is a great villain. I don't like him as much as Goblin or Aqua. He's still great. Um, That's another thing. If you read comics, those villains are both done like kind of. I would have liked either one individually done the way they were, but like literally no one. But Venom chooses to be bad. A Sam and Venom is Sam dead. A Doc Ock. It's. I mean, he's influenced by the art, but it's still like his choice the whole way through. He didn't even kill Uncle Ben on purpose. <laughs> that never <laughs> happened. That never happened. Okay, that never happened. Sorry. <laughs> so once again, more accidents. But, like, uh, but he still chooses to be a villain to pay for his daughter's medical stuff. Instead of like building sandcastles for people, he just goes about <laughs> things. <laughs> so literally, like having a villain that actually chose to be a villain for most. Oh, but Doc Ock chose that. It was all his choice the whole way through. I mean, an AI was controlling his brain. It wasn't controlling him. It was just influencing him. It, was the dark side of him represented through art. whatever. <laughs> but it was still him all the way through. Okay. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, definitely at least one more. One more? Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. I'll just take one. In. Okay. Yeah. Please give me Jaws. <laughs> Please give me Jaws. Sure, I'll do Jaws because I just did a Spider-Man one. This is Spider-Man 3. Oh my god, I got Spider-Man 2! No, we have to do this. Okay. This is too bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, why can I get Spider-Man? Where's the coin? Off? This is why like you gave Tim an RPG and you gave me like a slingshot. <laughs> um, I'll say heads for first. Just for second, for second. Heads for second. I want to go second. All right, you're going first now. Sales. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you played yourself. Tim, you congratulations. Out you played yourself. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Spider-Man Two has. I don't even want to approach that way. Let me think of how I want to approach this. Okay. Spider-Man 2 has much better villains than Spider-Man 3. I mean, okay. So, let's break it down. So, Spider-Man 2 has Doc Ock. Spider-Man 3 has Harry as New Goblin, Sandman, and Venom. Doc Ock, he's a guy you really sympathize with. You, you like this guy. Like, it shows him before he, you know, starts to turn. You know, he's a cool guy. He has conversations with Peter about science. He's really down to earth. But he's prideful, and that pride became his downfall as he, like, fully believed his machine on fusion would work. 
and then he thought that you know he can do it again he can make it bigger and it that he can actually get it to work this time it was his pride he could not believe he couldn't handle the fact that he was wrong and that's what makes him a really sympathetic villain he's a nice guy who just keeps going down the wrong path he starts robbing banks to get money he starts putting people in danger just to, to get to spider-man okay but sandman killing uncle ben are you kidding me <laughs> the whole i kill that was the worst retcon I've ever... Eh, not the worst I've ever seen, but a really bad one. What is the worst? And Ven- I can't even think of a worst one. <laughs> spot. Venom, Topher Grace, whiny baby that, you know... Like, who, like when you see Venom, you want this really cool, buff, epic monster that's just, like, devouring and slaughtering people and, like, putting Peter's loved ones in danger. Yes, Venom does that, but he's a baby while he's doing it. Like, when he has Peter pinned under him and he's like... You remember? You know what you did to me? <laughs> like, you can't take this guy seriously for five seconds. Maybe when he got the symbiote, he could have been cooler, but he wasn't even cooler then. Like, he literally prays for Peter to die. It was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. And Harry gets amnesia. Like, that was the stupidest thing. They built this guy up for the entire trilogy, and they gave him amnesia, and they cut him out of half the film that he was built up in. Come on! Come on! smack you in the head and see if you don't get amnesia. I'm going to you three stories. All right. <laughs> I, w- I would have just gone with Mr. Aziz if I was you. <laughs> just, just Mr. Aziz, done. All right. The rent? Well, that's Mr. Dickovich, but I really wanted to say that. <laughs> pride is an amazing theme. Tim was correct. But you know what's better than being shown pride one way? Being shown pride multiple ways. Venom is a villain of pride. So is Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock believes he is entitled to everything he gets. He's entitled to Gwen Stacy. He's entitled to that staff job, which is why he fakes pictures of Spider-Man. Because he is so prideful that he believes that to get his way, he should be able to cheat the entire system. Sandman is a villain of pride. He believes that just because his daughter is sick, he can go rob whoever he wants because he <laughs> believes that being having a hard situation justifies such decision. And then Harry Osborn is a villain of pride because he believes that in his he built his dad up so pridefully in his mind and his family legacy, he could not bring himself to believe that his that there would be any good reason for killing his dad and that Peter had no justification for it whatsoever. That is a villain of pride. Spider-Man 3 has three villains. Three. That's pride three different ways. That's science. It's three times better. You can't tell me that pride one way is better than pride three ways. That's three different things mixed together. This is a movie that that Spider-Man, when he finds out that he didn't know who Uncle Ben's killer was, that made that makes him rethink everything. Because what if he had chosen to kill to kill um, Spike in cold blood? What if he chose to kill Spike Uncle Ben? Is- it's a spike in the video. It's a spike, it's a spike in the video game. I know. I know. <laughs> Same as Dennis Cavity. I know that in the video game, I just love calling him Spike. <laughs> the, the video game based off the movie, his name is Spike. <laughs> okay. He's up there. I can hear him. <laughs> Alright, do you want to you want a rebuttal time? Yeah. Rebuttal time. Three, two, one, go. Here's the thing about Spider-Man 3. It's a movie full of good ideas, but it never has the time to execute them properly because, again, three villains, do the math, that's a third of the time less <laughs> dedicated to each villain. Doc Ock gets a whole movie to be developed and fleshed out. You get to understand this guy, but you're stuck with... Boom, Sandman. Boom, Harry. Boom, but like it's just nonstop, and they start to compromise the villains because of it. Like Harry gets amnesia, and then that takes him out for like half hour of the movie, so that they can focus on Sandman, and then Spider-Man takes out Sandman, so that we can focus on Harry again after he re-gets it, and then Venom is kind of thrown in at the end. Even I don't mind that, but you know. It's like three villains fighting for screen time. Each one of them could have had their own movie and could have been really good if they gave them the chance to develop these good themes, even though I don't think Pride is what they were going with for all three of those. But they don't because they have to juggle three. Three villains and three dance scenes. (laughs) That's all I have to do. (laughs) Comedic levity is an important part of any film. And to see, to see the symbiote, the point of the symbiote is that it brings Spider-Man down to his lowest points. 
You can't tell me that's not the lowest point in the whole trilogy. It's when he's dancing in the street. I mean, I can't... The fact that it's so bad is why it's so good. That's exactly the point of it. He's dancing. Spider-Man doesn't dance in the street, but he would if he was at his lowest point he'd ever been. But seriously, the point that comes to the symbiote, he hits his girlfriend. That's pretty intense. I mean, They've broken up by that point. <laughs> he still hates her in the face. Okay. Okay. You're not supposed to interrupt the flow of thought, dude. <laughs> what thought? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you can take as much time as you want. The ending. <laughs> he is Harry's arc while frozen because of his amnesia. Captain America is frozen. That adds to his character arc. And he has to choose to now go to die beside his friend because he has to put the idea of his father being this great man away because he finally knows that his father was not a great man. He was, in fact, the Green Goblin. And he has to choose to go die beside his friend. Yeah. All right. All right. right. What are your your real thoughts? Spider-Man 2 is better than Spider-Man 3. That was impossible. (laughs) Oh, my God. I gave myself a headache trying to argue that point. His lowest point was when he was Spider-Man no more. I don't think dancing in the street I'd consider his lowest point. Oh, man, that's the, it's I, the lowest point of the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's all. Yeah. I just really had to just put a clip of that scene when he's telling Uncle Ben that he doesn't want to be Spider-Man and he doesn't want to be Spider-Man. He he quits and he's just Peter. And then you see the suit in the trash. Like man, that scene. Every time I've that seen, is ripped right from the comics. I, I've show. seen it like thirty times at this point, and it still hits me in the feels every time. Mm-hmm. Spider Man Two, of course. Um, I don't hate Spider Man Three as much as a lot of reviewers do. Like, I actually give it a lot of credit in certain places. Um, so I think it's you know I've kind of warmed up to it over the years to the point where it's okay for me. I love Spider Man Two. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I sent him a rant on PSN. <laughs> like, like almost 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> a giant, like, five message long rant, you know, filling all the characters up of how Spider Man is. This was like seven so years bad. ago, probably. Yeah, of how much I hate it. Just randomly, out of the blue, no. On the PS3, bad. not even the PS4. <laughs> yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but I've warmed up to it at this point. You want to do a bonus round where we hand select stuff? Round two style. All right, okay. Me. Round two. What should we hand select? Shark Boy and Lava. Give me Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, I see it in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Close your eyes, shut your mouth, dream and dream and get us out. Dream, 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 dream. <laughs> we have some doozies. Actually, what are you going to pick? Because I want to pick something that kind of counters you. Shark tail. Oh, oh, oh man. This is gonna be a, such a battle. Man, my age just got cancer. <laughs> Why? Okay. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two. Wait, we need to flip the first coin. Where is the coin? Oh, it's over there. It reminds me of a scene in Lego Batman when he's like like two faces drive him and he's flipping the coin to see whether to go left or right and then Batman steals his coin and there's like there's like a fork in the road and they're like two face turn and it's like I don't know where to go without the coin and he just crashes but Batman doesn't kill people <laughs> their homicide is a crime <laughs> we, we didn't even call it you first, call it. first or second I want to go second alright Tails Tails a second yeah Tails you win yeah, wait, what? <laughs> Tails a second, you get to oh. go second. Okay, cool, cool. Do you still not understand how this works? I, I get it, I get <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm the last one. I get it. All right. <laughs> Will Smith, Jack Black, Angelina Jolie, Robert De Niro. <laughs> These are A-list actors, and this is an animated film filled with A-list actors. Can you think of any others? Yeah. Kung Fu Panda, amazing movie. Um, Lego Movie, amazing movie. Shark Tale, amazing movie. <laughs> it has an all-star cast, and it has a great point of not all the themes are not tr- are, are about not pretending to be something that you aren't. It's about being yourself and being content with yourself. Lenny 
is socially <laughs> rejected by his family because he because of being a vegetarian. He just doesn't like meat. What's wrong with that? So he has to run away because he doesn't want to be sick of pretending to be something he's not. Oscar is just a humble car well wash uh, worker. He's a slacker. He likes to have fun. But his aspirations are to be a rich person. He wants to be the one percent. He wants to live at the top of the reef. And he has to learn that everything he needs is right in front of him. His girlfriend, Angie. Yeah. She's right there for him this whole the whole time. And he treats her like garbage. And he needs to he needs to understand that he should he should enjoy what's around him before he doesn't have it anymore. And that's the point of Shark Tale. Enough said. You know, right, you're one, gonna go. Maybe one fish can't, can't make, make a difference. difference. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Go. Okay. Will Smith. Yeah, it's Why pretty much time. Out of, <laughs> out of your actual argument. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the thing about Shark Tale. Yes, it has an all-star cast, but they're represented by super ugly, just hideous fish that you do not want to look at this movie. It's all just brown and gross and disgusting. Who wants to see Will Smith CGI'd onto a body? Oh, wait a minute. The people who want to see Aladdin, those idiots. <laughs> oh my god. You're one of those idiots. Okay, I saw it. I don't... Never mind. <laughs> I mean, the people who like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. You get Will Smith, but an ugly Will Smith. Sharkboy and Lava Girl, you get Taylor Lautner, okay? Now, don't pretend you didn't have a poster of Taylor Lautner shirtless when you were in your teen years loving Twilight. This is Taylor Lautner. And again, it's a really just gorgeous movie to look at with, you know, the lava and the sharks and all that CGI up in your face, you know? Mr. Electricidad, you know, <laughs> Mr. Electricidad, da, 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 da. see, it's a funny, quotable movie. What are the themes, though, Timmy? The themes are, follow your dreams, <laughs> and don't let Linus steal your dream journal, because he's just going to ruin them, okay? Linus stole my dream journal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so let's send Will Smith to the principal's office and have him expelled for this horrible movie that he's in. Again, you want to watch Sharkboy and Lava Girl. It's a funny movie that with that's infinitely quotable has Taylor Lautner in it and nice to look at that that trash over that trash over there ugly as Shrek's dumb like <laughs> stupid <laughs> like why why would you want to see Shark Tale you don't because you're not stupid yeah yeah it's me one time <laughs> all right three two one go to bottom a lack of moral themes is the main problem with uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, wait, and so is this. Hey, it's 3D! <laughs> if you remember from back in the day, whoa! Oh, is, doesn't that enhance the experience, Tim? Yeah. Doesn't it? Doesn't this enhance the experience? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not being able to see anything <laughs> because you have to wear red and blue goggles doesn't make the movie better. Especially when there's a lack of moral themes. You could be like, oh, man, this 3D is terrible, but at least I can latch on to the good characters and moral themes of this movie. No, you can't. <laughs> is that it? That's it. <laughs> Who need... Wait, two, one, go. Who needs good moral themes? <laughs> what? Right, what you have? What? what? Okay. Shark Tale pretends it's about something, but when the theme is so overused, you know, the lie revealed story. Oh, I, I'm, you know, trying to be something I'm not. We've seen that a thousand times before. Like, who, at this point, who gives a Shrek dung about it? Shark Boy and Model Girl, yes, while it doesn't have like a compelling central theme, even though it's not compelling in that, it's at least a fun watch. Who wants to watch that? <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Again, it may have themes that, you know. You always say that's what I gotta say. I know, I, keep going, man, think of, I just have to keep reiterating my point. Jam it into your heads. That uh, Chuck Tail sucks. Okay? Jam okay. it in with 3D. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Like, okay, it has a ter- like, it thinks it's about something, but it's executed so poorly that you don't want it to be about something. It's just trash. Okay. Both these movies suck. <laughs> both of these suck. Yeah. What, what do you think comes after? I forget, I think I might have seen both of these movies in the end. <laughs> oh my. 
I saw all Sharkboy and Lava Girl in theaters, I remember that. Yeah, like everyone went to watch that back in the day. <laughs> wait, wait, which, which one, uh... What? Which one do you actually like better? Sharkboy and Lava Girl or Shark Tale? Hmm. I think Sharkboy and Lava Girl is... like a better kids movie. Like, Shark Tale is very confused. <laughs> and it's one of those just like, why am I here movies? Like, at least when you're like... At least on its face, you can enjoy Shark Boy and Lava Girl more when you're a little kid, because there's like action scenes and like bullies that make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to the principal's office and I'm expelled. <laughs> and it's just so reminiscent of like that era of movies that like everything was yeah. just so like CGI'd up and 3D yeah. and oh, yeah, the 3D is so nostalgic. Like there's <laughs> stuff that just flies towards the camera for the purpose of 3D. It's just like. The movie's horrible, but I love that stuff. It's funny because it's like, wah, wah, wah. I think they're both horrible movies, but Shark Tale is just horrible, horrible. I oh, yeah, and Shark Boy Lava Girl was kind of like written by like a kid. Yeah. So, <laughs> adults wrote Shark Tale. <laughs> uh, I think Shark Boy Lava Girl is it at least hits that so bad it's good that you can like actually yeah. watch it and be entertained. Shark Tale is like, <laughs> you just want to die. All right, so... Well, this was very fun today, actually. Yeah. I think I had more uphill battles. <laughs> I, I, I think you did really good. Like, your strategy, I think, really brought a lot to it. Yeah, the, the strategy is just make it negative. If something's, if something's the best part of the movie, make it the worst part of the movie. If something's the worst part of the movie, make it the best part of the movie. If something, like I said, if Mission Impossible has a confused tone, you make it that it does two things great. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm no expert on debate, but... I took it for one year, so I'm a pro. I'm kidding. I'm sorry you got Spider-Man 3, except for Spider-Man 2. That. No, yeah, some of those were on. Even um, a PhD, yeah. I, what was your favorite one of today? I think my favorite was Dark Knight versus It's a Wonderful Life. Because that was actually, like, the most substantive one. I, I feel like it was, but I just... I have to, like, clean my tongue after I just insulted Jimmy uh, Stewart. <laughs> uh, I really liked... Honestly, Spider-Man 2 versus 3, because that's... I, I think like it was really like what else did we do Spider-Man so, Spider Spider Homecoming versus what? Spongebob that was a good one <laughs> that was fun uh, yeah thank you so much Vine for being here mm -hmm. be on the lookout uh, if I enter the YouTube space I'm sure Tim will put up some kind of announcement yeah and, yeah uh, and be sure to check him out on morning, noon, and night they upload whenever they feel like it <laughs> yeah it's a podcast comes out whenever yeah okay so, so be sure to like comment and subscribe and uh see you next time see you next time Oh,